Good afternoon or good evening, irrigation contractors. My name is Eric Jones, better known as Turf Teacher. Welcome to course number 11823, Turf and Landscape Irrigation Best Management Practices. This course is worth one half hour for your NCIC LCB license renewal. This document can be downloaded directly from the board's website at www nciclb.org or you will be able to find this attachment uh, underneath this podcast on turfteacher.com within the course itself and so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just go over these best management practices for turf and landscape irrigation so I'm kind of reading it and kind of throwing in my two cents as usual uh, for this. This course, again, is for one half hour. There will be five questions to answer uh, about the document and about the podcast once you completed it, and you can download your proof of attendance as soon as you uh, finish the course. And so the purpose, the purpose of this document is to present irrigation best management practices for turf and landscapes. These BMPs are a supplement to the information found in the adopted rules or the minimum standards. They support the design, installation, maintenance, and management of turf and landscape irrigation systems in ways that further save water and protect water quality and better serve the citizens of North Carolina. These BMPs are recommendations, not rules. Contractors are asked to consider these recommendations in all phases of their work. These BMPs are in no way intended to supersede the published rules governing irrigation contracting or any local or state laws or ordinances or any manufacturer's recommendations for installation and maintenance. These BMPs will be reviewed, evaluated, and updated periodically by the board. All comments and suggestions are welcomed by the board. And so, guys, that is the purpose. And if you know irrigation like we're supposed to, it's all about protecting the health, welfare, and safety of the general public and our water systems. And that is the purpose of these best management practices. And so turf and landscape irrigation best management practice, a best management practice is a recommended irrigation practice that is intended to reduce water usage and protect water quality. A BMP is economical, practical, and sustainable and maintains a healthy, functional landscape without exceeding the water requirements of the landscape. Again, this is 100% directed at protecting the health, welfare, and safety of the general public and protecting our water, our water systems. It's protecting our water usage, not using too much, and, and that, that should be a big concern for each and every single one of us, not to use more water than we're supposed to. Guys, we're stewards of the land. You've heard me say that time and time again in every lecture uh, prior to this one. So let's move into irrigation design. Uh, and if you've printed this out, that's what I recommend in doing, printing this document out, listening as we go along. I mean, it's good information. This is something that we should review each and every start of the season is kind of just get that information in our head. I like keeping a copy of this in the truck in case, you know, anything arises or, you know, if there's any questions you can refer to. Sometimes you don't always have that good internet connection. And I like reading from paper, to be honest with you, uh, than looking on down at my little phone in the field. So I keep a copy in the truck. But irrigation design, C section point zero four hundred of the adopted rules for minimum standards for irrigation design. All irrigation systems do not utilize all elements outlined herein. Consider only those items pertinent to the Pacific design. So whichever whichever really pertains to you is what you need to consider. It is thoroughly acknowledged that each site possesses its own set of conditions and constraints in regards to irrigation design and installation. The irrigation design must take these to must take these into account and the designer installer must use their best judgment in applying these standards with the intent of compliance wherever possible and practical. And it starts off with plan standards. Provide a plan to the following standards, graphic standards. We must graphically represent our irrigation systems and it must accurately portray the site. 
It must show all pertinent site information. It must be legible. Our clients have to be able to read it. It needs to be reproducible, whether it's through a photocopy machine or, you know, a, uh, a scanner that can uh, be emailed or, or however. It needs to be drawn to scale. And guys, when it comes to drawing to scale, that's what I find a lot of people kind of lose the information if they don't do it every single day. Uh, you know, most of you guys have been doing it for years, though. This is something simple, and it should be very, very easy to do. Uh, but my students at the college, sometimes I have to reiterate to them how to use a scale. And in irrigation, guys, probably the the two biggest scales that we're going to use would probably be, I would say, on the engineer side is uh, one inch equals 10 feet, one inch was one inch equals 20 feet. And then if we're using an architect scale, probably a quarter inch equals a foot or an eighth of an inch equals foot. Cause that's, that's typically what our landscape design drawings are in. So basically our uh, irrigation systems are going to be in that scale as well. Uh, it needs to have the contractor seal. You guys know that uh, you're supposed to have that stamp and you're supposed to put it on all documents related to irrigation, especially your irrigation drawings. The contractor's or designer's name, address, and phone number, the client's name, the project name, and the date of plan in all revisions. And you need to have multiple copies, guys. That's why it needs to be re reproducible. When you're when you're giving them that set of plans, you know they may not hire you to to do the irrigation maintenance. Um, and, and and the next guy needs to come along and and be able to find valves, be able to find um, the valve boxes. I mean, it, it, we, we've seen it. We've all seen it where we haven't been able to, uh, to locate a valve. And guys, we've actually been working with a client and it's unfortunate the, uh, the irrigation contractor passed away and it'd been, uh, about three years. And the client then called us and said, Hey, I'd like to go ahead and, uh, revamp this irrigation system, get it turned on. They've got a cutoff valve and we have looked and looked and looked, and we cannot find it. We cannot find it. Uh, the information that the uh, the contractor left, uh, the phone number, address, everything's been disconnected. But I mean, you know, he passed away, and his wife shut down the business, and so it's hard for us to to really do anything for uh, this client. But yes, we are working out a solution. But you need to have that map for 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 something that happens just like that. The plan components needs to be site specific information you got to have the north arrow we need to find out where north is it's got to have the topo or any key elevations where pertinent now a lot of times these surveys that we get from the homeowners are not going to have the topo on it um, you may or may not be able to see that from your county's geodata system they may or may not have the topos on it but you know we could probably do some spot elevations and kind of and, and help us figure that out. Uh, or you could probably run down to your city county office, your planning department, and actually get uh, a larger area map that would probably have some uh, uh, some topos on it. Again, we got to have the scale, the property lines, and easements, and then all constructed site elements, utilities, the planting plan, the existing trees. Uh, that will you know have the canopies to scale we need to have the water source information where is the point of connection is it a well pump or is it a municipal system the type of connection is it a split tap water meter is it a standalone water meter well pond cistern note that a split tap is created when an existing tap to a domestic meter is split to service a second meter for irrigation use. We've got to have all that. And guys, it's just as simple to write that on the plan and have a copy for yourself at the office and leave a copy with the client. Your power source information and location. The irrigation system components. Note, manufacturer model number where allowable by law and then show all pertinent items listed. Size items where appropriate. You need to have the backflow prevention device, the master valve, the pressure regulation device. The main line is going to be dashed. The lateral lines are going to be solid. And to be honest with you, I thought that would have been vice versa, just, just for my design uh, background. But good thing we have these best management practices that we can read and follow along. So make sure that the main line is dashed. All lateral lines are solid. Note the pipe size and locations where the pipe sizes change. Control wire routing if not along the main line. 
the isolation uh, valve location, quick couplers, hydrants, and other points of connection, your thrust blocking where appropriate, your station zone valve location. Like I said, again, how many times have uh, we been on a job site and we've tried finding a, uh, a zone when we couldn't? Your sprinkler head locations, the controller locations, controller sensors, which would be a rain switch, uh, soil moisture sensors, flow sensors, sleeves, where are they at underneath sidewalks and underneath driveways, special trenching areas where you need to hand trench or direct bore, and then if the system has a two-wire control system, the, decon- the, de- the decoder number, my apologies, and the valve code and the descriptions need to be on the plan. Your design information, your estimated gallons per minute at the POC, your static pressure at the POC, your design criteria, your pressure and volume, your pipe type and sizing, backflow prevention device size and type of enclosure, your control wire type and sizing, your valve enclosure types and sizes, your hydrozone information, which is zone number and valve size, estimated pressure, estimated gallons per minute, estimated precipitation rate, your sprinkler type, and special design considerations. Six is your installation information. It's going to be your construction details, your sprinkler swing joint assembly, your backflow prevention device and enclosure, your sleeving, your isolation valves, your valve configuration, your thrust blocking on ring and gasket pipe, your grounding where the ground rod and ground plate locations are, your lightning protection, your controller installation, your ditch cross section showing pipe and wire, And then B, your construction notes. C, reference to locating and protecting underground utilities and improvements. D, specifications and not presented elsewhere. And then E, construction techniques required. And that should be on all of our irrigation um, design plans. Now, then there's going to be a record irrigation drawing standards. And, you know, a lot of the times, you know, we may just provide the client with a record drawing and, you know, we're required to, uh, but a lot of times, you know, we're going to have the designer. It's going to be an irrigation designer. It's going to be a landscape architect. We've even had, uh, you know, professional engineers draw the irrigation system uh, in CAD. And so we've, you know, got it plotted out and we're actually building it to those specifications. And that's what everything that needs to be on there. Probably what we're going to do is take those drawings and then kind of do our as-built or record drawing uh, in the field. And we are required to present that to the client once we install the system. But your record irrigation drawing standards, C section .0300 of the adopted rules for minimum standards for record drawings. Provide the plan to scale. Include locations and product information regarding the lateral piping and sprinklers. Three, the design standards, C section .0400, again, of the adopted rules for minimum standards for um, design standards. To ensure that the irrigation system is designed to efficiently and uniformly distribute the water to conserve and protect water resources and to function well as a component of the overall landscape, the irrigation designer shall provide a complete irrigation design package to the owner of the system, including to scale drawings, details, and product data. Piping, apply the following best management practices of maximum safe flow rate for your municipal water suppliers with the lowest safe flow rate prevailing as the design guideline. For main lines over two and a half inches, utilize bell and gasket piping. Include blocking details and locations when straight main lines exceed 500 feet. So, make sure that you include that. A lot of times we probably won't do that. We don't even think about, um, you know, 500 feet when we're actually sitting down drawing these things out. Always recommend the use of a reduced pressure zone backflow prevention device. Consider the use of a solenoid-controlled master valve to prevent excessive water loss from a pipe burst or a defective solenoid. 
When possible and available, specify a metering device that measures the total landscape water use separate from other use. And a lot of times, guys, that that's required. I mean, here in Forsyth County, city of Winston-Salem, we have to do that. It's uh, We're going to have a separate water meter. And, and I'm not sure what that is in other municipalities. It'd be nice to know. Uh, I wish we really had some kind of forum or something that we could, you know, post this information about. But uh, definitely here in Winston Salem, we're using the uh, the second the second meter um, for zones with drip micro irrigation. Use flush valves to flush the laterals after completion of the irrigation cycle. Select components and design zones to achieve a minimum operational lower quarter distribution in the range of using your uh, spray lower quadrant DU of 55%, rotor lower quarter DU is 70%, and then your drip micro irrigation emission uniformity of 80%. And number eight in regions where a landscape water allowance applies. Include an estimate of the future monthly landscape water allowance based on historical reverence, evapotranspiration rate, the landscape area, and the landscape water adjustment factor provided uh, by the purveyor or water provider. Recommend the following water conserving concepts and equipment where appropriate and economically justified. You're going to use an alternative non-potable water source such as rainwater where practical and allowed by law. Special management practices and components may be required when using alternative water sources. You're going to install water conserving devices such as freeze and or wind sensors to suspend irrigation during weather conditions that are unfavorable for irrigation and how many times have we seen an irrigation system running into pouring down rain I, you know i've seen one uh <laughs> on a major university by their ball fields um not long ago it was pouring down rain and their sprinklers were just you know throwing water all over the turf and it was a heavy heavy downpour so they had no rain sensors on Environmental sensors that can actively measure weather conditions to determine daily plant water needs. And then soil moisture sensors to monitor soil moisture and suspend irrigation if the moisture reserve in the root zone is significantly above the allowable depletion limit. And then C, to simplify manual reading of the total landscape irrigation water use, a water meter with an electronic output signal that supports a remote display mounted at the controller. And then for automated management of the landscape irrigation water use, a landscape irrigation meter with an electronic flow rate output signal that is compatible with the controller. This allows the controller to measure and control the amount of water use as well as to indicate leaks, broken pipes, or within the sprinklers. For larger sites where a significant potential water savings may result, specify a controller that allows for flexible irrigation scheduling and advanced water management features. These features may include incorporating current, real-time, or daily evapotranspiration ET data, water budgeting, and soil moisture monitoring. Need to specify a separate common wire from the controller to each hydrozone station valve to allow for a sensor-based control of each hydrozone and provide a high-flow sensor to warn of pipe burst or faulty valves. Now, when it comes to irrigation system installation, we're going to see section point zero five hundred of the adopted rules for minimum standards for system installation. Our water supply, we're going to use a master valve on all systems with a pressurized water source to minimize water waste. Our trenching and piping, if serious damage could result, consider boring as a less invasive procedure. Sprinklers. It is best for the sprinklers to operate at the mid-range of pressure listed in the manufacturer's literature. And then in the owner's manual, it is recommended that the contractor perform a final walkthrough with the irrigation system's owner or the owner's representative to explain the operation of the system and then show the working system and to have the owner or the owner's representative system accept the system. Now, that 
may or may not always be the easiest thing to do, especially on the commercial side. Again, you know, we traveled around the southeast part uh, of the country uh, installing landscape and irrigation systems for the O'Reilly Auto Port uh, parts. And, you know, the store manager would be there most of the time. A lot, you know, a lot of the times we would get there to do our work. And, you know, the inside of the store was about ready to be stocked. And it would always take us, you know, sometimes a day and a half, two and a half days. That was kind of average. It was between a day and a half and two and a half days uh, to do both the irrigation and the landscape system. I mean, we worked, you know, 18-hour days for two days just to get it done. But, uh, you know, we would install the irrigation system. Um, we'd always have to do an as-built drawing because the architect, there was really no um, civil engineer or PE on site. It was all done by a building architect, and they would do the landscape plan, and then they would say, uh, you know, landscape contractor to submit irrigation as-built drawing to uh, the store manager, and then we would have to send one uh, back to the general contractor's office. And, you know, we would do that, but... You know, guys, they would turn the system off as soon as we left. Um, once the store manager took over the uh, the landscape and took over the building, the first thing they did was turn the water off because their their salary was based 100% as a percentage of profit. And so if they were spending money on water, that was less money in their pocket. And, you know, that's, you know, to each their own. But, you know, why waste the money? putting in the system if they were never going to run it but uh, out of the many stores that we did we only walked around with uh, one of the store managers and that happened to be in the state of Virginia um, you know where the uh, the store manager actually kind of cared about the landscape and was going to actually use it and and take care of it and so but the rest of them you know they just really didn't use the systems after they uh, they put them in um, and then like, you know, with, with homeowners, you know, you've got to give that owner's manual, um, you know, it's going to require going back on the weekend guys or late in the evenings, uh, you know, when, when they get home from work and, uh, you, you, you want to do this because, uh, the, the man of the house is going to want to play with that system and, and, you know, to avoid service calls or anything like that, you need to show them how to do it. Tell them that you're going to shut the system down and that you're going to restart it. Uh, in the springtime forum that uh, this is, you know, a hundred percent automatic system. They shouldn't be messing with it at all. But, uh, you know, the last thing here in the BMPs with your irrigation system management for water efficiency standards, you're going to see section 0. 0.0600 of the adopted rules for uh, system management. Make written notes of repairs so that a history profile can be developed to prioritize future improvements to the system and provide copies to owners or owner representative. Employ a certified landscape irrigation auditor at least once every two years to conduct a thorough and comprehensive check for efficiency of water application. Differences in the irrigation system's required design operating pressure and actual water pressure can affect efficiency. Efficiency. Install pressure reducing valves, PRVs where needed, and pressure regulating control devices on individual sprinklers to stop misting due to excessive uh, pressure. Verify the, that pressure regulators are adjusted for designed operating pressure, and whenever possible, irrigation scheduling should incorporate the use of evapotranspiration data or soil moisture measure, measurements coupled with rainfall data. And so guys, this is a lot of information to take in uh, when it comes to um, providing these best management practices. And, and like I said, guys, I have to read these every so often. I like reading them. I like just staying on top of it. And like I said, the board uh, may, you know, change it year to year or whatever. So you need to print off a copy and you need to study them and, and basically just read them before you do a new installation. That whole thing with the, uh, with the drawing, um, you know, guys, that's some serious stuff. We're required by law to provide that record drawing. And I've also even heard, and I would like y'all's opinion on this. We've never installed an irrigation system in uh, the Raleigh area or Cary, but I heard last year at the Green and Grow show that the town of Cary requires a PE. And I, I may be wrong. I may be wrong. If um, anyone is listening to this, um, lecture let me know send me an email to ejones at turfteacher.com and and tell me if i'm right or if i'm wrong but this is what i heard at the green and grow show last year of uh, 2019 that um 
you know, the town of Cary does require the irrigation plan to, uh, to be drawn up by a professional engineer. Um, I even heard that they wouldn't accept it from a landscape architect, which doesn't make sense or, or an irrigation designer. It had to be that PE. So I'm not sure about that. So let me know, uh, if you know the, um, uh, the reasoning and whether or not it is true or not behind it. And so guys, this will, uh, conclude our, uh, Turf and Landscape Irrigation Best Management Practices. This is course 11823 for half-hour credit. Uh, take the, um, the five-question quiz, and you'll be able to download the proof of attendance. Thanks, and uh, I'll see you in the next lecture.